What's going on everyone? I hope that you're doing well and continuing to stay safe. So today we have an incredible build with the War Javelin and the Meat Skewer. And this is entirely movement focused. So I'll be talking a lot about the various movements that I have throughout the game, especially towards the end. So stay tuned for the whole thing. But before we get started, I did want to announce my official Dead Cells podcast. It is going to be called Chaos and Chill Cells Cast. Again, that is Chaos and Chill Cells Cast. And the first episode will be coming up sometime this week. I have to edit all the commentary and then I have to put it over a run and then we'll just see how that works out. But the first guest is going to be my good friend Monospite. He's a Twitch streamer. You can follow him over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash M-O-N-O-S-P-I-T-E. He plays a lot of roguelikes, especially like stuff like Dead Cells, Enter the Gungeon, things like that. He's a really cool guy, pretty chill, laid back stream, so definitely check him out. But he will be the first guest on this podcast, and we actually filmed it today. And we talked about different things such as the 1.9 update, how we got into Dead Cells, some advice for newer players, and you know some kind of changes that we would like to see, especially as it relates to two-handed weapons. So if any of that interests you, definitely check that out. I will hype it up a few more times before I release it. And the other thing is that I am currently working on a War Javelin guide that is part of what this run is. And I went on a couple runs before this one. I had one with the crowbar and one with the Sadist Stiletto. So I'm just trying out different things with this War Javelin so I can get some really good footage for you guys. I want it to be as comprehensive as possible because the War Javelin, a lot of people don't like it right now because of the teleportation being a little bit weird. But it's very nuanced. And that's a lot of what you're going to be seeing in the upcoming footage is that a lot of the movement that I make is extremely intentional. So what I would like you guys to do is to really analyze the movement that I make. I'm going to be providing commentary over it, obviously, but I want you guys to be able to look at things yourself and be like, okay, this is why he did this in this situation. And this is what the javelin is capable of doing. So I really want people to be able to appreciate this weapon for what it is, because I think it's absolutely a phenomenal weapon in 1.9. So with that, leave a like and subscribe for more Dead Cells, social commentary, and everything else that I like to do. And let's get started. So we're going to start off with a little bit of craziness in Promenade. And the idea is, I'm just trying to throw these guys off of the platforms. And essentially, I want to be able to get as many hits as off, as many hits as possible as I can off on these enemies before having to actually use my meat skewer. Especially because early game in 1.9, you're not getting a lot of damage. So I'm really just trying to stick things up against the wall with the javelin. And from there, I can just use my meat skewer just as a way to like pin them up further. Meat skewer has a nice amount of breach on the weapon, so I should be able to do this. We are running melee tactics, obviously, because that's the only way this build's going to work unless I do colorless. But, you know, there's no need to do colorless, especially for me. Like, if a weapon has two stats that are in common, I'm just going to use that stat. And they both have ta tactics in common in this case. But anyways, we're going pretty well with this build. I've gotten hit a couple times, but it hasn't been that serious. And again, it's just the craziness with this build. Uh, one thing to note with the Javelin is that the enemies do not stun after the third time you hit them. They stun the first time, and second time they do it, it's a 50% reduction on the stun and third time they don't stun at all so once i clear out the initial mob and i just have to deal with those runners then i just get the kills off from there and i'm able to kind of isolate different enemies at once i wait for the field experiment to start doing his melee attack then i can javelin him off platform over to the bombardier and i'm making really good use of the predator and one thing that i'm doing is trying to javelin enemies off of platforms onto other enemies and that actually kills the enemy from below because it's like they don't expect the enemy to come up from up top, so that ends up killing them as a result. So that's been extremely helpful at this point in the run. So now we have the first curse of the game over in the Toxic Sewers, and now I'm just going to fire off my Javelin. For some reason, it pierces and hits the knife thrower through the wall. Don't really know what happened there, so I was just kind of shocked at that point. And I was just like trying to test this out. I was like, did my Javelin really just clip through the wall right there? Like, what was that? Might be a bug, might be a very innocent bug. I've never seen that happen before, and I've, this isn't the first time I've used Javelin, so things like things like this happen sometimes. You can't do anything about it. Uh, fortunately for me, the owl doesn't attack while invisible anymore, so I can actually maintain my predator. And 
This allows me to be able to have some flexibility with this owl while being able to hit these enemies while cursed. And I don't have to worry about being aggroed, I don't have to worry about anything like that. I can just stay invisible and then get the hits off from there. So we're gonna ki uh, kill the rest of these enemies, clear out the curse, and you know, Toxics, uh, the Prison Depths is going very, very nicely so far. I'm very happy with the way this has been going. And we're really just trying to get some identity with the build. And one of the problems with early game, especially in 1.9, is because you don't do a lot of damage, uh, there is a problem when it comes to trying to be able to build synergy and build a uh, build identity, essentially. And this fight was a bit challenging because of the box, but luckily, we were pretty lucky, I would say, in terms of just being able to stay inside that box and not take any hits as a result. And I want also say there aren't many highlights to show, it's just more or less the same thing that you've seen the first two bombs. I don't want to waste your time in showing you a bunch of clips that I don't really hold any value in. So we're just jumping ahead straight to the curse. And this is a fairly long clip because there was... Ossuary is kind of an obnoxiously large level to the point where it can be difficult to find enemies when you're cursed and you don't have the explorer's instinct on. And so I'm just spending so much time trying to find enemies and it's getting a little bit annoying because I'm just like, okay, like at some point the enemies are going to come. I know that there are more than 10 enemies left on this map. However, it's also to a point where I'm just like, okay, I need to get this explorer's instinct on track. Finally able to get it and then I'm able to find these 10 enemies from there. And that can be a little bit challenging sometimes, especially because in a level like Ossuary, I feel like sometimes it's easy to lose that concentration because of how big this level is and then you're just running for a long time and then you get kind of bored. And I don't know, maybe it's intentional on the devs part. If so, I think that's cool because it allows them to have a little bit of diversity between the builds and the biomes, excuse me, not the builds. Uh, but I'm able to, again, do that same thing with the Javelin in terms of just being able to knock out enemies on top of other enemies. And this teleportation thing is something I want to talk about as we clear off this curse eventually and head into the concierge fight. And that's that what I'm trying to do throughout this build is to be able to teleport to specific spots. And that's where the learning curve of this weapon really becomes a little bit challenging because you have to know specifically where you want to go when it comes to the javelin. And one thing that I see people often making a mistake on and end up dismissing weapons like the javelin or meat skewer is that there is a learning curve when it comes to this weapon. You have to be able to figure this out and it takes time to be able to effectively use it. it took me a few times to be able to get it on my own. Many of you may have seen my war javelin run where I just try to, tried it out for the first time. And even then I was kind of t uh, teleporting into spikes and things like that. But now that I've had a few runs under my belt and a couple failed runs actually, while doing like this guide and trying to work on some tech for it, I had a couple bad teleports with the javelin. I was teleporting into spikes, I was teleporting into enemies and things like that. And these are all things you just gotta keep in mind of when running this weapon, but it doesn't make it bad. What it does is that it makes it difficult. And I think that's an important distinction to make with weapons like this. Not every weapon's going to do 100% damage against bosses. That's just not the reality of the situation. War javelin is one of those things that you can kind of splash onto any sort of tactics or survival build and be able to just knock enemies off of platforms, teleport to the spot where you want to, and I think that's what the devs had in mind with this one. But with this concierge fight is going by extremely quickly. I have great synergy right now with the poison and the bleed. Meat Skewer is doing a phenomenal job of doing what it needs to do. And towards the end of the concierge fight, I just start dropping my skills because I don't really feel like fighting this thing straight up, especially because I have a melee weapon, and fighting it with a melee weapon can be a bit challenging. But we hit up the sanctuary, and this... Elite Caster, I kind of play it a little bit safe because I'm very scared of its little aura bomb, whatever it's throwing at you. I don't know what exactly it is. Is it a fireball? Leave a comment if it's a fireball. Or if it's not, leave a comment. Leave a comment anyways because I'm lonely. But I almost get hit by another fireball from this guy. But luckily we're able to get out of it and we're able to get the kill. And San uh, Sanctuary is going well so far. Uh, the reason I'm going to Sanctuary is because it has uh, four scroll fragments which equals one scroll which means i'm getting more stats by the time i hit up the next level as opposed to still which only gives me two that's really the only reason and the thing is no matter what level i decide to go into four is always better than whatever and if you do the math if you go into timekeeper which is what i'm going to be doing from sepulcher then you'll be able to um, get the 
whatchamacallit, you'll be able to get the proper amount of scroll fragments to finish off in Hypeat Castle. So it's a little bit of math, but at the same time, it's not that complicated. Um, we take the curse. Um, I actually saw the curse before the doors opened, but I decided to take it once the doors opened and I would have a better array of enemies so I can scope them out, do my thing from there. One thing to know about the duelist is that the war javelin does not actually move the duelist the way that you want them to. So that's something to note for the future. I'm able to kind of move around a little bit subtly into the isolated platform with the rampager and the reason i did that was because i didn't want to aggro the other rampager or the golem able to do that it's one of those subtle movements that is extremely crucial to performing well in this game and what you do is that as you're down smashing you roll right when right before you're about to down smash and then you can do a really quick roll and i was able to utilize it right there into getting into that isolated rampager without aggroing anyone else and unfortunately we got to deal with another golem but we're able to do it clear out the curse no biggie and it's at this point in the one run when i'm realizing that hey we may have something good here because i'm no hitting all these levels i'm able to knock out these demons quickly i'm able to knock out golems quickly that's always a good barometer if you're knocking out golems quickly then you're doing something right and there's something going on with the build that's working and now i'm not even using my skills anymore i'm just battling it straight up with my meat skewer and javelin and that's something i've been wanting that's something i wanted to do with this build and i'm able to teleport using the javelin and then getting into an optimal position with that meat skewer so i can attack him from behind and from there i can be able to get some key hits off and that's how i'm able to kill these golems it's not because of the power of these weapons meat skewer is actually fairly weak for a weapon but it's such a strategy based weapon i think that's what makes it work so well with the javelin which is another strategy based weapon but anyways, we hit up the Sepulchre, and this is a bit of craziness right here, but um, now I pick up a Flame Turret with Toxic Cloud, and that's able to kill off the Kamikazes for me. I'm really just scared of the Weirded Warriors here, because they're, they're just a challenging enemy to deal with. But I'm able to cheese up on top of the ladder, everything dies except for the Weirded Warrior, and I'm just able to kill that off with the grenade from the Meat Skewer. So it's really just about using what's at your disposal, trying to make the best of the situation. Weirded Warriors are immune to, well not immune, but they they tend to block ranged attacks. So you have to keep that in mind if you're running a solely ranged build. And you gotta figure out ways to beat it, possibly through skills, possibly through status inflictions. And for me, stuff like the Cleaver works, but I do have a Meat Skewer and that's I'm able to deal with it from there. I do end up taking an extra curse in this level. Uh, there's two curses in Sepulchre, one's behind the three cell door and one has a 10% chance of appearing in the overworld. So this is the overworld curse and I pick up the key right before getting the curse because the key is over a spike pit, just do not want to risk it, no need to risk it at all. So I go through this door and now we're just trying to find these 10 enemies and Sepulchre can be kind of challenging because enemies tend to appear out of nowhere sometimes, especially as you're dealing with darkness, you're dealing with a lot of different things. So this is like probably the worst level in the game to have those curses in. One thing to note is that um, this elite knife throw, I'm going to actually come back to it after I clear this curse and beat it up. The reason I do this is because I don't want to deal with the curse with a problematic ability, such as the overhead turrets, and especially because I'm running Meat Skewer, which is a weapon that kind of puts you all over the place, and Javelin puts you all over the place. You just don't want to deal with things like that. But we do have two more enemies left, and that's that, or three enemies left, and that's the Inquisitor up there, which I'm going to let shoot at me. And I'm just going to kind of think while I wait at the permanent light, so that I don't have to worry about the darkness. I'm able to throw up my Javelin, kill both of those two enemies, and then from there, I'm going to... What am I going to do here? This is a very long curse, because I was strategizing it, because the run before, I actually had gotten killed on a curse because of the... Um, I forgot what they're called, corpulent zombies, the, the fat mummies. So again, that's that clip right there, that's just another example of the war javelin being so good when you know how to strategize with it because I'm able to teleport to very specific spots. That's the thing. It's not, it's not doing a lot of damage, but it's getting me to spots that I need it to get to in order to be able to finish it off with the meat skewer. That's what I've been wanting to do with this build the entire time, was to be able to get to those very specific spots. It's Again, it's it's a tactics weapon. It's in the name itself. It's a tactics weapon, which means that you're going to have to fig be very intentional about your movement. That's just kind of how this works with tactics. And I have a tentacle run that's uploading. It's going to be the exact same way. But I, you have to be, you have to strategize when it comes to stuff like this. Like, 
it doesn't make it less effective. Like I said during the concierge fight, it does not make this a non-effective build. What it does is that it makes it so that you have to think a little bit more before you just start spamming buttons. I'm gonna aggro this corpulent zombie to a spot, to a very closed space. There is a risk with that, um, because if, he, if you don't kill him before he jumps, you're pretty much dead. But I knew that I had the power at this point to knock him out in one shot, so I wasn't that worried about it. Uh, we do have one more enemy left in this room, so I'm going to go kill that final enemy, which is that Inquisitor, and that'll leave me with one less, one left on the curse. And after that, we are done with curses for the entire game, which is a phenomenal feeling. Once you're, when you're done with curses, I mean, yeah, there's a 5% chance of getting in High Peak Castle, but we can assume that that's just not going to happen. So it's always a good feeling to finish off all the curses for the game, because now it's going to be just solely your playing and how you do. I'm going to play very conservative here and wait for both the failed experiment and the corpulent zombie to go to the right side so I can end up behind them and throw the javelin and then just finish this off. I don't want to take any unnecessary risks. Even if I clear the curse, I just don't want to take any damage from the corpulent zombie. Bit of a problem, but we're able to finish this off and I wait for my skills to come back so I can battle this elite. I don't know what it is, um, that, so I want to wait for both my skills. Turns out it's just a dark tracker which goes down in a matter of seconds and I'm able to get everything from there. Now we go to Timekeeper for ones, because I'm pretty confident in this build, and this is not the best build for Giant, and I'm pretty confident we can take in, take Timekeeper on. So the idea is throw the Javelin, meet Skewer, and then roll away before she does anything. And that's actually what we were able to do in this first phase. Now the second phase is gonna be a little bit more challenging because of the Falling Crystals. So I just use my skills, make sure that they get the majority of the damage off, throw my Javelin, get my Meat Skewer, and I no-hit the Timekeeper without a shield. That is my first no-hit on Timekeeper in a very long time. I actually got it with the Damage Over Time build some time back, but um, since 1.5, I've only no-hit her three times, and once was at the shield, twice without, and that, it, it feels good to no-hit a boss that you tend to struggle with. It really, really does. And that just goes to show how powerful a build like this is. And I, I didn't overthink it with that fight. I used I used the strategies that had been working for me throughout the build, and that's actually ended up that ended up being what changed this my entire outlook on this weapon and on this entire run. Because I did have questions about the run beforehand, but that timekeeper fight made me realize that yeah, this is a really really good build. So I, I'm and honestly, I'm just very happy with the way this had been working out. And you're going to see me use the Javelin for defensive utility because I was not going to be able to avoid the Royal Guard just by running and rolling. And same thing with the Spike. Like, that Royal Guard was going to push me into that ball and chain or push me towards him. So, using the Javelin as a way to teleport, it's defensive utility. That's something I am going to cover in this guide. And so, you know, you again, it's just one of those things. It's that learning curve, but once you figure it out, it feels pretty damn good, honestly. So now we got these two dark trackers. I'm not that worried. Obviously the burn stuff doesn't really work so I'm just kind of using my javelin throwing it a little bit liberally and from there I'm able to get the kill. Get a very quick kill on this last elite which is the slasher. I kill the three elites in High Peak Castle so I can get that extra scroll that is laying around there. So and that'll bring me up to I believe 31 by the time we hit Hand of the King and I think Hand of the King will be a little more challenging. I'm not going to use the war javelin as much uh, just because it's it's kind of difficult to use it when uh, like there's spikes on either side and it's kind of difficult to go and grab your javelin or teleport you're kind of screwed from there it's kind of the same problem as giant which is why i actually went to timekeeper instead but we're gonna quickly kill these two elites and from there hand of the king is gonna come back and we're just gonna wait because I, I i'm getting a little nervous lately with hand of the king because he tends to post up on the sides and if i use stuff like the war javelin or meet skewer tentacles there is a chance that i could end up in the spikes but i don't do it here i'm able to get the no hit and again, that's three bosses that we've no hit, and this build is going great so far. Now we've got this librarian, and I just want to isolate her in a corner, so I just do that. Able to use my meat skewer, I jump up at the last second just to be, play safe and not have to deal with the fact that I may fall and end up at like 1 HP by the time I recover back up. So you don't want to do stuff like that, you want to play it pretty safe in this level. It's a long level anyway, so you, you just gotta... Uh, brace yourself for it. it. It can be a run killer sometimes. It really can be. Um, they saved one of the hardest levels for last, which I think was the right move. I somehow see this challenge rift. I, I've, I've gotten maybe five challenge rifts ever in this level. The only level I've seen it in less is Stilt Village, and honestly, I rarely ever go to Stilt Village these days, so that's probably impacting that a little bit. But I, I take the amulet with the 
with more stats just because I get if I get hit then I won't get take too much damage so um, with this particular set of spikes they work on a timer so if you start uh, climbing up the wall quickly then you should be fine um, this is a pretty straightforward um, challenge rift not, not nothing really that crazy going on in here and I say this all the time with challenge rifts make a decision before actually going because if you are trying to decide while you're moving then you're kind of screwed so just wanted to say that a little bit well it was a pretty short challenge rift so no harm no foul there um and you know we've got this final fight coming up pretty quickly and now i'm kind of thinking i'm trying to think ahead of time as we get the kill off on this librarian and the two elites there's one down there uh which is the slammer and then the failed experiments up above what you're going to see is that that cleaver has bleed propagation it's going to actually aggro the elite from above as soon as i kill one of the elites from the slammer so I was kind of a little confused at the time, then I realized, oh yeah, that's right, bleed propagation. Um, so you're gonna see a lot of the clips with this um, with this castle because I think this was some of my best playing of the entire run. And you're gonna see me use the javelin for a defensive utility first. Um, and I think at this point in the run, I hadn't gotten hit in a good long while. I can't remember when the last time I was hit was. Um, it might have been High Peak Castle, I want to say. I honestly cannot remember, or it might have been in Sepulchre. Um, this Magistrate's in kind of an unfortunate spot, but um, my skills are able to knock it out. I have a good amount of stat total, so I wasn't that worried at this point. So what I'm going to do here is actually really cool. So I use the Javelin to be able to uh, teleport away from the field experiment, which I know is jumping at me, and I can use the Wall Cheese to make sure the Librarian doesn't hit me. Because and at this point, my confidence is just sky high, because I knew at this point that... I'm playing some of the best I've ever played in this game, and I don't mean that with any sort of exaggeration. Like, I've had crazier builds than this with like insane stat totals and knocking out like Hand of the King in like a matter of seconds. But like, as far as like the movement is concerned, this is some of the best movement I have ever had in this game. And you can even see it right here, even just like the subtle nuances with all the rolling and things like that, and teleporting at the right time, and just making sure that I'm able to get these kills off in a very strategic manner. Like this is honestly some of the best movement I've ever had in this game and it really uh, speaks to the the amount of love that the devs put into this game to create something like the War Javelin. But I'll get into that after we finish off this last fight, which is against the Collector. And it's going to be a challenging fight. War Javelin is kind of a difficult weapon to master uh, and difficult against bosses too, but we're getting a lot of damage off right away and he's going to be healing as soon as he's done spinning, I believe. Um, or we get a couple hits off and then we can uh, drop both of our skills again and then just keep spamming the meat skewer now he's going to do a stab move I'm going to make sure that um, I'm away but he just hits me at the very last second and I'm so irritated because I was like why how did he even hit me with the tip of his syringe and I was just like oh that's unfortunate but um, luckily you know we're able to get uh, we're able to just use the health pot no biggie I have three left I'm not that worried um, that was the first serious set that we took in a while. Um, but, you know, we're coming up at the end of this fight. We have him on three heals. And now we're just going to kind of play it safe here. We'll just make sure that we don't take any unnecessary damage. He's going to drop the Panacea and we're going to go grab it and heal up. And now we are just going to wait for an opportunity to be able to do some significant damage on him. And after that, I'm going to throw the Javelin because I'll be far away. And I should be good to go from there. He's going to jump up again just because he likes to be annoying. And... He's going to do the laser beam one more time. I'm just going to grab the javelin, throw it at him from far away, get the kill off. And that is the run. And honestly, what I have to say about this run is that I, I, I already talked about this uh, just about a couple minutes ago. But this is honestly some of the best movement that I've ever had in this game. And it sp speaks volumes to the amount of love that the devs put into this game to create something like the war javelin and completely revamp it into something that is amazing now. And something that has so much diversity to it and you saw different moments in this build when i was teleporting to very specific spots for offensive utility i was teleporting to different spots for defensive utility um and i was just going all over the place and it looks crazy but it was very intentional every step of the way i was very intentional in my movement and that's something i want you guys to take away from this is that it war javelin is and meets your tentacle and weapons that make you have to move those are very intentional in terms of just like what your movement needs to be to be optimal and that stuff like that actually helps you when it comes to running other weapons because now you're able to 
figure out what spot do I need to get to to be able to kill these enemies. I think one of the mistakes that a lot of people make in Dead Cells is trying to attack an enemy from where it was instead of trying to get to the right spot and then go from there. It's a very difficult concept to explain and to master and I'll actually try to show off more and more and more of this as I do more runs and I'm able to show you guys different things. Uh, my build with the Alchemic Carbine and Bloodthirsty Shield, I made good use of this in order to like be where I needed to be in order to have an advantage over an opponent. And I think that's the main takeaway of this video is optimal movement. And I need you guys to keep this in mind as you run through Dead Cells. What is the most optimal strategy that I can have in order to get a win? Once you figure that out, 5BC is not a problem for you. I guarantee it. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate you guys taking time out of my day taking time out of your day, and I guess my day too, I don't know, I do read comments, so it might be my day too, <laughs> but anyways, I do appreciate you guys watching my content, be on the lookout for the podcast, the Chaos and Chill Cells cast, I'm very excited for it, the first episode's coming out in a couple days, so uh, be sure to stay tuned for it, leave a like, and subscribe for more Dead Cells guides, runs, commentaries, and social commentaries as well, and I will see you guys later, have a great night everybody, and stay safe out there.